Exactly. So let's turn to a source that can hopefully help us get some clarity on what exactly is happening, and that is Representative Austin Scott. He represents the 8th District of Georgia. He is a member of the House Ag Committee. He's also a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Representative Scott, welcome to AgriTalk again. Welcome back to AgriTalk. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me. I'm uh, just like everybody else in the world, very concerned about the things that we're seeing on the the TV and hope that uh, people will obviously keep the people in the Ukraine in their prayers and, and pray for the, the, the those people in Russia that have shown the courage to stand up against Vladimir Putin and, and this regime for the things that they're doing. Okay. that that's, That is one of the things that I want to talk to you about, and it sounds like that is some information or some intelligence that 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 you are getting from uh briefings how often are you getting briefings on ukraine and what is the what's what did you learn in your last briefing well i i can't speak to what i learned in my last briefing we we do get briefings on a very regular basis what i will tell you and i and i am comfortable telling you is that back in december uh the intelligence community had done extremely an extremely good job and had uh, provided a lot of insight and was very accurate with their predictions of what was going to happen in the Ukraine. I do uh, think that the right thing was done um, by the DOD and the State Department and the administration in in declassifying a lot of that intel and sharing it with the world. And I think that that, by by declassifying it and sharing with the world what we expected, then um, maybe it it softened some of the fear and anxiety uh, that came with the attack. But but there's still a lot of pain to come for America and and the rest of the world financially from from what is happening over there. And obviously, agriculture will be uh, a a big part of that and and candidly may be the first to see uh, the increased input cost and other things. Right, right. You, you mentioned the response of the Russian people uh, to to the actions by Vladimir Putin. Uh, what what are you hearing there? Is is there a chance that there could be uh, where where the Russian people could stand up to Putin and and end this? Well, the, uh, understand this. I mean, Vladimir Putin is a guy who that if he cannot kill his political opponent, he will put them in jail. And so uh, Navalny, if I'm saying his name correct, and, and others who have actually been willing to stand up to to Putin for the tyrant that he is, uh, have, have either been killed or imprisoned. And so uh, a lot of the Russians are not willing to, to stand up to Vladimir Putin. The, the ones that are certainly deserve our support and our, our, our prayers. And it is a, uh, it's very concerning to me that you know, with with the UN, and uh, I'll, I'll specifically stick to the UN. That when you have uh, a non a non nuclear power being attacked by a nuclear power that is uh, superior to them in size, equipment, and and virtually everything, if the if the UN doesn't have the ability to step in and stop some of the atrocities that are going on, then what is the function of the UN? Right. Uh, right. But, right. but it is – it's very bad. We expect it to escalate. The Ukrainian people and President Zelensky deserve a tremendous amount of credit for their ability to uh, give the Russians a significantly better fight than I think that the world uh, expected. But 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 don't underestimate what the Russians are willing to do to win this. Uh, you know, who would attack – even I did not think that they would attack a nuclear power plant the way they did and risk the potential exposure to radiation in that part of the world. Just, right. just think about that for a second. Aside from everything else that they've done, who sends rockets into a nuclear power plant? Right. Right. And, and that's what we're dealing with. And it's not just the Ukrainians. It, it's the whole world. And from the standpoint of agriculture, you know, there's a tremendous amount of, of commerce that occurs in that black sea region. There's uh, whether it's the potash that comes from uh, Russia and Belarus uh, or the products, uh, ag products going back in, into that region, uh, the Black Sea and the uh, sanctions and other things are going to have a tremendous impact from, 
from that area, cost of transportation and, and, and other things on, on our ag inputs. Right. Uh, any indication of just how much damage has been done to the ports there at the Black Sea in Ukraine? No, I, I don't have any indicators on that, okay. but I do know that products coming out of those ports will be sanctioned. And so you've got two of the largest uh, suppliers of potash in Russia and Belarus. And so, you know, the the fourth largest is China. Fortunately, the, the largest is Canada, which is ob- obviously our neighbor. Uh, but I'm I'm very concerned about the inputs that we need to have the yields that the world is used to in 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 u.s ag production and in candidly production around the world i I, I don't think there's been enough discussion at this stage about the food supply for the world and 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 what it does if the if the ukrainians are not allowed to plant their crops because right as soon as the the as as soon as their ground thaws they would be they would be preparing their fields I, i don't see them being able to do that in the ukraine they they produce a tremendous amount of um wheat for the world and uh the the impacts don't seem to be right. getting the the type of news right now obviously that the kinetic strikes from the russians are getting but as as, as we move further and further from uh the incursion day i i think you're going to see more discussions about what what does this mean for the food supply of the world as, okay. as we push further okay. and further from the incursion date. Okay, we've got about three minutes left. Jim, you want to jump in here? Have you got anything? Well, real quickly, um, Congressman, uh, the USA Rice this week asked, uh, I know USDA and probably the Hill for some relief relative to the fertilizer prices because of all the major commodities, they have not seen the price appreciation. Is there any chance that in a coming optimist budget or some other measure that you can give some, some aid to that sector? I, I would certainly hope so. Uh, what I want you to understand, though, is this is not a White House that speaks with uh, the Republicans on the Hill. This is I've, I've served under multiple White Houses. This is the most partisan White House that I have served under. And uh, while I would hope that we would be able to get some relief to the the areas that have received the, the largest imp- uh, impacts, we have seen very little willingness from this White House uh, to work with us on, on those issues. And, and that brings up something that is is a very real concern that I think people in the ag community need to start talking about is that we have historically, uh, if not, not been able to pass, if we hadn't been able to get past a new farm bill on time, an extension is what we would usually do. Mm-hmm. Well, with the input cost, just as you're talking about with rice, doing what they've done over the last uh, several months and, and certainly looking to continue to push forward, uh, an extension of the current farm bill does absolutely nothing for production agriculture because the right. input prices have gone up so high that the reference right. prices don't do any good. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was with a group of producers yesterday, and we had that exact conversation, uh, Representative Scott. Uh, real quick, I've only got about 30 seconds left on this. You said the war in Ukraine will escalate. It will last a long time. That timeline is something that agriculture is very interested in. Is it a is it a six month, a, a two year, a ten year timeline? What what do you think we're looking at? Oh, hey, I, I I honestly do not know. I mean, I wish that the UN would come together and, and declare a uh, what I would call a no go zone over the skies of Ukraine and, and around the seas, so that we could stop some of the atrocities. I I, I don't expect that to happen. Uh, but if you look at what the Russians did last night, I mean, you're you're talking about Russians uh, going into a country yeah. and sending rockets into a nuclear yep. power plant. Yep. Now you just think about that and, and understand oh, yeah. that's not what the Ukrainians are dealing with. That's what the world is dealing with. That's right. That's right. Representative Scott, you've been very generous with your time. Thank you so much. Hey, thank all of you so much.